Welcome to another Quick Queries video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I'm your instructor, Richard Rost. Today, we're going to tackle that question that a lot of people ask me, why do so many IT professionals hate Microsoft Access? They do. I get tons of hate mail myself. Plus, answers from your YouTube questions and comments and lots more. Today's Quick Queries number 59. And no, you don't have to watch them in order. <laughs> Today's question comes from Aaron in Tampa, Florida. Aaron says, I work in a medium-sized office and I use Microsoft Access for some of our internal databases. Every time I mention this to the IT guys, they roll their eyes and tell me Access is garbage. But here's the thing. My database works fine. It does what I need. And honestly, it has kept parts of the business running smoothly for years. So why do so many IT pros seem to hate Microsoft Access? Is it really that bad? Or is there something else going on here? Well, Aaron, I've been, I, I've been answering emails like this from people for years, and I've come up with a list of about 10 things that I think might be the issue. So the first thing on the list is loss of control. The number one reason I think that IT pros hate access is they don't like the idea of end users spinning up their own databases because it bypasses IT oversight, right? But the flip side is that by empowering business users to build their own tools, it saves time and money. And IT doesn't need to micromanage every little small project. IT pros also love to say that access doesn't scale. It can't handle real business workloads. Well, sure, it has limits, but most small and mid-sized companies never hit those limits, especially if you're talking about a department level database that does like one specific thing. And if you do hit those limits, access can upsize to SQL Server while still keeping the same front end. So you got a built-in growth path. Another thing, everyone in IT, myself included, has a story about corrupted access file on a shared drive. But usually that's because the database wasn't split properly or it was being abused by too many simultaneous users. You know, don't expect to get 60 people using your access database at the same time without problems. Uh, but with correct design, and backups, access is very stable and reliable. Just know its limitations. And of course, that brings us to it's not enterprise grade. Uh, to IT pros, if it doesn't have SQL Server, Oracle, or some other you know enterprise level database server behind it, it's not real. Uh, but the truth is, is that not every problem needs a giant expensive enterprise system. Access fills that gap between spreadsheets and full on server databases, right? It's that middle ground where a lot of real business happens. Now, there are plenty of terrible access databases out there built by people with no training. And I've seen a lot of these. IT sees these disasters and assumes that the platform is bad. They think access is bad because people don't know how to build an access database properly. But that's like blaming Excel because someone made an ugly spreadsheet, right? Good developers can build solid professional access apps that run for decades. And these IT people don't want to be supporting these bad databases that, you know, oh, I got a problem with my query is not, oh, that's not our problem, right? Access is garbage. It's not access. It's you. <laughs> uh, many IT pros never trained in access. Their classes and certifications cover SQL Server, Oracle, MySQL. So they dismiss access as amateur hour software, right? But lack of training isn't the same as lack of capability. Just because they don't know how to use it, that doesn't mean it's not powerful and doesn't have its place. From their perspective, managing one big SQL server and like a cloud-based solution or whatever database they've got for the company is cleaner and easier than having dozens of these little access databases scattered around the network. You know, this department has that one, she's got this, you've got your own. Uh, but the reality is those little access apps, they often serve niche needs that IT doesn't have the time or the budget to deal with. So, you know, they're the quick solutions to keep the business moving, but they don't want to maintain them. Now, access does have an image problem because it comes bundled with Office. IT pros see it, you know, sitting next to Word and Excel and PowerPoint, and they think it must be a toy. But that's a stigma, not a fact. Access has been powering serious business applications for decades and continues to do so quietly behind the scenes. Access databases are easy to copy and share, which worries IT. 
Security isn't as robust as a server database, but again, context matters. Not every business app requires bank level encryption. For internal tools with proper permissions and backups, access security is usually good enough. Obviously, you don't wanna store sensitive information, credit card data, social security numbers, that stuff shouldn't be stored in Access to begin with, but every Access developer knows that. You don't put critical business information in just an Access database. That's where SQL Server comes in handy because it's properly encrypted and secured. So that is one of the valid concerns that IT pros might have. But again, Access can be a front end to SQL Server. So, you know, just use the, use the proper data management tool for the security that you need that's still no valid reason not to use access as a front end. And finally, there's the turf angle, and this is a big one. If end users can build their own databases, it threatens the IT department's role. Nobody likes the idea of being replaced by a non-programmer with a desktop app, but that fear doesn't change the fact that access fills a real need and in many cases complements IT rather than replaces it. So there you go, Aaron. That's why I think so many IT pros hate access. So I hope that helps you out. All right, let's head over to the YouTubes and see what kind of comments we have this week. First up, one of my members, SI Softball, says he set up different variables for um, when users log on and he wants to be able to track uh, who made changes to what records. And for this, I'm gonna refer you to my track changes in data which lets you keep track of who changes what, and it's based on their username and all that stuff. So check this out, and if you still need more help after this one, uh, since you remember, post a question in the forums on my website. Get lots more help there. Well, here's another one too that keeps a log of when everyone logs on and off, and it's based on their machine name and their login name. So check both of those out, I'll put links down below. Next up, TXM Moore says, uh, quick question, suppose the PDF form has a checkbox. How do you impose a checkbox, check mark to a checkbox um, or even a signature? Okay, so this fill in the PDF uh, video, I talk about how you can use access to open a PDF in like your web browser or whatever program it opens in. And then it's not my favorite method, but you can use send keys to then tab, tab, tab to the right fields in there and then type stuff out. So you could fill out a form if you know what the PDF is like, right? If it's the same form you're using all the time. Um, typing in like your name and all that, that's easy. You can use send keys. For check boxes, it's usually the space bar. So you tab to it just like an access, right? You tab to it, you press the space bar and then it'll check or uncheck that box. As far as a signature goes, like actually, you know, like the hand-drawn signatures, you're on your own for that one. I don't, I have nothing. I got nothing to help you. If anybody else has any ideas, let me know. Post a comment down below. Next up, one of my members, Rick, says, do you have a tutorial for something like this in Excel? Well, uh, the fitness database started off as an Excel sheet, and it really wasn't anything more than just, you know, some, some functions. Um, if you're talking about making an Excel tutorial that does everything that the fitness database does so far as of part 39? Absolutely not. <laughs> and I will not be building that because it is much, much more difficult to automate all the stuff like we're doing in the access version in Excel. Could it be done? Maybe, yeah, sure. I mean, VBA is VBA and you can do a lot of the same stuff. I wouldn't attempt it. Access is a much better tool for this, but, uh, the short answer to your question is no, I do not. So sorry. <laughs> Renee says, I find I learned something from each of these episodes. I'm considering making a diary log of all the techniques and improvements I'm gleaning from the series for future reference. Be interesting to look back and see how much I've gained from this. Uh, when you finish that, send me a copy. <laughs> I would love to see it. <laughs> I'll put it on. I'm, when, when I'm done with the series, I was going to make like a, a single page. Like uh, one of my moderators, Alex, a uh, friend of mine, he, he does that for a lot of the series that I make. But this is a big, long one, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to automate something. So it'd be nice to put a list next to it that, you know, has all the techniques and improvements. So if you want to share it, that'd be great. Uh, Rayhan says, I've learned a lot from you. Appreciate the good work. Thank you. One of these days, I'm going to buy one of your courses when I get the budget, especially eyeing the SQL Server online setup one. Do you run sale offers on your courses? Well, I'm not like one of these uh, businesses that has a sale every other week. I don't do a President's Day sale, a 4th of July sale, and a Mother's Day sale, and 
third Tuesday of the month after the full moon equinox sale. Now, I don't do all that. I do one sale every year, and it's my Black Friday slash Cyber Monday sale where I give 50% off anything on as far as courses and templates and seminars go. So you could do that, or you can join as a member at any time, and uh, you get discounts based on your membership level. So Learning Connection members and Platinum members always get the 50% discount. So check it out. I'll put links down below. Next up, Edwin, one of my members, posted in the copy records function, I get an error when I debug compile. The error is this line, status equals blah, 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 right? Um, now, the error says compile error. The argument is not optional. That should be a key right there, okay? That the argument is not optional, meaning you're missing an argument, okay? What you did is you're trying to set status, which is the name of a subroutine, equal to something, okay? You don't need to put that equal sign there. So just get rid of that equal sign and it works. It'll, it's basically status and then that message, not status equals that message, okay? You can go watch this video. It'll explain how the status box function was built. I know I didn't cover it in the fitness database series because it's already here. So go watch this, okay? Next up, Kevin is commenting on my Edge browser control video. He says, is there a way to receive inputs and access from the web page? For example, if they click on a button on the web page, it passes that value to the access database and the database can act. Uh, yes, it's possible, but it's kind of a pain. Um, the Edge browser control and access does let you run JavaScript on the page and read results back, but it's limited and honestly kind of clunky. Um, you can make it work with callbacks or by pulling the page, but it's not like a smooth built-in two-way link. If you guys want to see me do more with the Edge browser control, let me know. Post a comment down below, and I'm always, I'm always game, right? Squeaky wheel gets the grease, but is it possible? Yes. I think it's way too much work for what it's worth, though, but that's just my opinion. When it comes to my own website, I think it's easier to use API calls but that's only on a website that you can control yourself. But, uh, you know, the Edge browser control is okay for, you know, tinkering around with other web pages, but it's not the best for, like, passing data back and forth. And I like to finish every quick queries, if I can, with something positive. This one's from the Smart Mover. He says, I have a business I run with an access database, and the business does about $1.7 million in revenue per year. Good for you. By the way, I built the database myself by only watching videos on this channel. So thank you, Computer Learning Zone. And thank you for posting this comment. That's awesome. I love to hear from people who have built databases that run their business and they did so uh, learning from my videos. So that's great. That's awesome. Uh, good luck with your business. And thanks again for your comments. And that is going to do it for another Quick Queries. I hope you learned something. Live long and prosper, my friends. Enjoy your weekend. I'll see you next time. If you enjoyed this video, hit that thumbs up button right now and give me a like. Also, be sure to subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. And make sure you click that bell icon and select all to receive notifications whenever I post a new video. Do you need help with your Microsoft Access project? Whether you need a tutor, a consultant, or a developer to build something for you, check out my Access Developer Network. It's a directory I put together personally of access experts who can help with your project. Visit my website to learn more. Any links or other resources that I mentioned in the video can be found in the description text below the video. Just click on that show more link right there. YouTube's pretty good about hiding that, but it's there. Just look for it. Now, if you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access, including building forms, queries, reports, tables, all that stuff. It's over four hours long. You can find it on my website or my YouTube channel. I'll include a link below you can click on. And did I mention it's completely free? And if you like level one, level two is just $1. That's it. And it's free for members of my YouTube channel at any level. Speaking of memberships, if you're interested in joining my channel, you get all kinds of awesome perks. Silver members get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, and there's hundreds of them by now. They also get one free beginner class each month, and yes, those are from my full courses. Gold members get the previous perks, plus access to download all of the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos. 
Plus, you get access to my code vault where I keep tons of different functions and all kinds of source code that I use. And gold members get one free expert class every month after completing the beginner series. Platinum members get all of the previous perks, plus they get all of my beginner courses, all of them from every subject, and you get one free advanced or developer class every month after finishing the expert series. And you can become a diamond sponsor and have your name listed on the sponsor page on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you next time.